If you're a fan of classic movies and sitcoms from the 70s, you must have heard of Jimmy Walker, the greatest comedian of the 70s. He was not just the face of sitcoms, but also one of the biggest comedians of his time. We are doing a lot of double clutching. But as fans of Jimmy, we have all wondered what he's up to these days. Is he still acting or doing stand-ups? Is he married now? Well, if you are one of such curious fans of Jimmy, then you're in luck. We have some interesting information about the life of Jimmy Walker. Information that you might not get anywhere else. Let us get into it. Growing up in the tough parts of the Bronx. In 1947, in the vibrant borough of the Bronx, young Jimmy Walker entered the world with a spirit as strong as the concrete jungle surrounding him in New York. Growing up in a tough neighborhood characterized by bustling streets and towering tenements, Jimmy's childhood was painted with both challenges and moments of triumph that would shape the man he would become. From a young age, Jimmy was no stranger to adversity. Raised in a small apartment by hard-working parents facing financial hardship, he learned the value of perseverance and hard work early on. The South Bronx where he grew up was populated largely by working-class families. Its image as a poverty-ridden area developed in the latter parts of the 20th century was influenced by several factors including white flight, landlord abandonment, economic changes, crime, demographics, and also the construction of the Cross Bronx Expressway. The expressway cut through the heart of the South Bronx, and the highway displaced thousands of residents from their homes, as well as several local businesses. The neighborhood of East Tremont, in particular, was destroyed by the expressway, and most of its former residents never recovered from the incident. You add that to the large influx of African-American immigrants from the American South, combined with the racially charged tension of the civil rights movement, the rage following the assassination of Martin Luther King, and the dramatic rise in crime rates, further contributed to white middle-class exodus from city and the decline of many South Bronx neighborhoods. Following the implementation of desegregation policies, white parents who worried about their children attending racially integrated schools began to relocate to the suburbs, which remained predominantly white due to cost as well as legal barriers created by restrictive housing covenants and selective lending. In turn, areas of the Bronx that became predominantly African-American or Hispanic were considered bad risks by lenders, contributing to the decline in real estate values and lack of investment in the existing housing stock. All of these contributed to the harsh realities and image of the south side of the Bronx where Jimmy grew up. Despite the harsh realities that surrounded him, Jimmy found pockets of joy in the simple pleasures of childhood. The neighborhood served as his playground, where alleys and fire escapes became the stage for imaginative adventures with friends. Together, they navigated the maze of the urban landscape, transforming mundane moments into unforgettable tales of courage and camaraderie. Amid economic struggles and societal pressures, Jimmy discovered his natural gift for humor. Blessed with a quick wit and a penchant for mischief, he honed his comedic talents as a coping mechanism, using laughter to lighten the weight of his circumstances. His infectious energy and infectious laughter became a beacon of hope in the sometimes bleak landscape of the Bronx, bringing smiles to faces of friends and family members worn down by everyday challenges. As Jimmy journeyed through his tumultuous childhood, he encountered both adversity and opportunity in equal measure. The vibrant culture of the Bronx nurtured his creativity and resilience, pushing him to find his voice in a world that often overlooked the struggles of those on the margins. Through his experiences, Jimmy forged deep bonds with his community, drawing strength from the shared resilience of those around him. Despite the obstacles that threatened to overshadow his youth, Jimmy Walker emerged from his Bronx upbringing with an unbroken spirit and a determination to rise above his circumstances. His childhood, though marked by adversity, was also a testament to the power of laughter, friendship, and unwavering perseverance in the face of life's challenges. But as hard as living in the Bronx was for Jimmy, it not only fostered his comedic side, but also gave Jimmy the street smarts that he would need later in his life. Growing up in the tough parts of the Bronx is a huge part of Jimmy's personality, and it echoed in his humor, showcasing resilience from a challenging upbringing. 
One can easily assume that his success might not be possible without the difficult situation he grew up in. Jimmy's early struggle with education. While Jimmy excelled in the education he got from the streets of his neighborhood, he did not find the same level of success in his classrooms. Jimmy's experience in school was a roller coaster of highs and lows, filled with moments of triumph and defeat. As a young student, he struggled to grasp fundamental concepts presented in class, often feeling lost and overwhelmed by the pace of the curriculum. Math problems seemed like complex puzzles with no clear solution, and reading comprehension tasks left him feeling frustrated and defeated. One of Jimmy's biggest challenges was staying focused and motivated in his studies, as he was constantly distracted by basketball. Jimmy also found himself daydreaming or zoning out during lessons, missing crucial details that would later come back to haunt him during exams. The pressure to excel in academics weighed heavily on Jimmy's shoulders, causing him to experience bouts of anxiety and self-doubt. But his academic struggles were not completely of his own making. Jimmy's struggles in class could also be blamed on the state of the educational system in the Bronx at the time. The number of qualified teachers in the city was reduced greatly, with a large number of the white residents leaving the community, and the struggle of the educational environment mirrored the struggle of its economy. This combined with Jimmy's struggles led to him having a rather difficult time academically. But while Jimmy struggled in class, he excelled with his classmates. His social skills were impeccable, and he made friends wherever and whenever he could. Plus, Jimmy had an immense love for basketball. His prowess on the basketball court made him one of the beloved students, and also helped him build an identity outside his failures in the classroom. This success on the basketball court was the reason Jimmy wanted to be a basketball player as a child, and not an actor. Sadly, the idea that a gawky, string-bean-framed teenager could become a basketball star did not seem realistic. Instead, he abruptly quit school and worked an odd assortment of jobs until wisely returning to night classes at Theodore Roosevelt High School and redeeming himself with a diploma. The federally funded search for education, evaluation, and knowledge next came through for Jimmy as he was able to learn a trade, radio engineering slash announcing. Within a year, he was hired as an engineer for a small radio station but gained a minor reputation on the sly as a funny guy and good writer. This side interest was what motivated Jimmy to try comedy performance. In the end, Jimmy Walker's educational struggles were not just a series of obstacles to be overcome. They were valuable lessons that sculpted his character and shaped his future. Through perseverance, determination, and unwavering belief in himself, Jimmy proved that even the toughest challenges can be conquered with the right mindset and attitude. Jimmy's Transition into Performing Arts In 1967, Jimmy finally left Search for Education, Evaluation and Knowledge Institute and was introduced by a friend to a militant poet troupe, The Last Poets, where he performed a five-minute opening act and spent the next 18 months developing his repertoire as a comic. His performances caught the eye of comedian David Brenner, who helped Jimmy and several other comedians, including Steve Landsberg and Bette Midler, get their shots playing the famed improv in New York City. The quartet soon became regular performers, taking their shot at the big time after receiving calls to perform on The Tonight Show, although Jimmy was not invited exclusively. Later on, Brenner, Midler, and Landsberg then got their chance to play on The Jack Parr Show, but all refused, unless the show's host gave Jimmy a shot as well. The host reluctantly agreed to give Jimmy a chance, and Jimmy delivered a great performance, attracting the attention of Dan Rowan of Laugh-In, who gave him a guest spot on the legendary variety show. Jimmy followed this with a second spot on Jack Parr's show, which earned him a contract with Columbia Broadcasting System as a warm-up comic for the short-lived sitcom Carlucci's Department in 1973. After several years of struggle, Walker's career was finally moving forward. With all of these happening, Jimmy found the courage to quit his day job and concentrate on performing stand-up full-time. During one performance, he captured the attention of a casting director who was working with Big Shot producer Norman Lear. The said casting director was casting for the producer's latest sitcom, Good Times, a spin-off of another popular sitcom, Maud which ran from 1972 to 1978. 
The new series was to be centered on Maud's former maid, Florida Evans, played by Esther Roll. The ironically titled series focused on a poor black family struggling to make ends meet in the projects of Southside Chicago. Though Jimmy was originally cast in a supporting role, producers quickly realized that audiences liked the charismatic, though often buffoonish character J.J. Evans, who was a budding comic book artist prone to chasing girls and coming up with get-rich-quick schemes that always set the family back further. With his skinny, energetic, and youthful-looking charm, as well as plenty of harmless sass and attitude, Jimmy fit the show's vision perfectly, although he was a 27-year-old playing the teenage son of the main character. His catchphrase, Dynamite, became a popular item in the American vernacular, and Jimmy became such a major celebrity that Time magazine named him Comedian of the Decade. Clothing, belts, and even a talking doll that blurted his familiar phrase were soon on the open market. As the writers focused more attention on Jimmy, particularly his stereotypical characterization of Blacks, co-stars Rowley and John Amos, began voicing their displeasure over how they were being portrayed. Amos was upset enough to leave the show after the third season, followed not long after by Rowley after season four. Jimmy becomes a household Hollywood name. After his breakout performance as James Evans Jr. on the beloved sitcom Good Times in the 70s, Jimmy used his fame from the successful series to venture into other forms of entertainment. One such venture was the comedic film Let's Do It Again in 1975, where he starred alongside acting legends like Sidney Poitier and Bill Cosby. The movie was about two con artists trying to turn Jimmy's character, who was a skinny wimp, into a feared enforcer. The movie was a commercial success and allowed Jimmy to demonstrate his comedic skills on the big screen. Jimmy continued to build on his success in the film industry with roles in movies such as The Concord, Airport 79, a disaster film that put him in the spotlight alongside a cast dealing with a perilous in-flight situation. Despite mixed reviews, Jimmy's performance was praised for adding a lighthearted touch to an otherwise tense narrative. In the following years, Jimmy appeared in a variety of film projects, including comedies, dramas, and even a few action films. While not all of his post-Good Times movies achieved critical acclaim, his dedication to honing his craft and exploring different genres earned him a reputation as a versatile actor willing to take on diverse roles. As the movie industry evolved, Jimmy found new opportunities to showcase his talent in both mainstream and independent films. His willingness to collaborate with emerging filmmakers and experiment with unconventional roles demonstrated his commitment to pushing boundaries and expanding his creative horizons. Despite finding success in the world of cinema, Jimmy's heart remained rooted in the art of stand-up comedy. After taking a hiatus from live performances to focus on his acting career, he made a triumphant return to the stage, delighting audiences with his sharp wit and infectious humor. In 1975, in the middle of his good times success, Jimmy released his first live comedy album, Dino Might, an amusing set recorded at the cellar door in Washington that highlighted his strength as a commentator on race and other social issues. Jimmy's comeback to stand-up comedy was met with enthusiasm from fans eager to see the legendary comedian in his element once again. His performances were a blend of observational humor, personal anecdotes, and social commentary, reflecting his unique perspective on life and laughter. As Walker honed his comedy act, Roles in film and on television became more scarce, particularly regular series roles. He appeared in the short-lived drama Bad Cats in 1980, then returned to the sitcom world with the equally short-lived At Ease in 1983, which starred Jimmy as a platoon sergeant who keeps his company in hot water because of his get-rich-quick schemes with the Army's property. After a bit part as a porn shop clerk in the action thriller Kidnapped 1987, Jimmy was given what could have been his final shot at starring in his show, playing the Richard Pryor character in the small screen adaptation of Bustin' Loose in 1987. The syndicated series lasted 26 episodes before being canceled. But as the years went by, Jimmy continued to shine on stage, proving that age was no barrier to creativity and laughter. His dedication to the craft of comedy and his genuine love for entertaining audiences set him apart as a true master of the art form, not just a comedian or an actor. 
In addition to his stand-up comedy endeavors and movies, Jimmy also explored new avenues to connect with fans, including podcast appearances, comedy specials, and live shows. His passion for making people laugh and spreading joy through humor inspired a new wave of fans to appreciate his comedic genius. Whilst he became popular as an actor, Jimmy already had stints in other media roles. For instance, Jimmy was a weekend personality on contemporary rhythm and blues music station, KAGB 103.9 FM, licensed to Inglewood in the Los Angeles market. Then he appeared on multiple television game shows such as The Tonight Show and Match Game during the 70s and early 80s. He was a five-time panelist on the Match Game Hollywood Squares Hour from 1983 to 1984. He also appeared on the 1990 revival of Match Game and various game shows during that era. In the late 90s, Jimmy returned to his radio roots hosting shows on multiple radio stations. In 1996, he appeared on a split release with power violence band Spaz, distributed by Spaz-owned label Slapaham Records. Then, in 2012, Jimmy's autobiography, Dinomite, Good Times, Bad Times, Our Times, a memoir, was published. In the same year, he announced the release of his official app developed by Monty Goulet for the iPhone operating system. After Good Times went off the air in 1979, Jimmy continued making guest spots on popular shows of the day, including Cagney and Lacey from 1982 to 1988 and The Fall Guy from 1981 to 1986, though his popularity began to wane throughout the 80s. He tried his hand at feature films, but he was mainly relegated to bit parts, showing up briefly as a window washer in Airplane in 1980. But it quickly became apparent that his bread and butter was stand-up, which he did as much as he could, becoming a regular performer in Las Vegas and other venues across the country. Jimmy's Life of Solitude While Jimmy was born in the bad neighborhood of the Bronx, he was brought up in a tight, loving family. His parents, Lorena and James Walker, created a nurturing environment where values like resilience, humor, and love were cherished above all else. Lorena Walker was a vibrant and spirited woman with a contagious energy and was the epitome of strength and grace. Her kind heart and unwavering support were the foundation of the Walker household. James Walker, on the other hand, was a hardworking and dedicated man who instilled in his children the importance of integrity and perseverance. However, growing up in such a healthy and loving family did not push Jimmy to have a family of his own. This has been a topic of discussion around his name since he became an established name in Hollywood and had no significant other around him. Jimmy has addressed the situation on multiple occasions, stating that he is not anti-love as some have speculated. Instead, he believes in his freedom as a person. Sadly, this explanation has not prevented the media from putting the spotlight on his marital affairs or lack of one. Many internet sites claim he has been married since 1980 to former actress Jerry Fields, only due to their convincing appearances together in the movie Tattletales in 1974. The pair have both confirmed that they were never an actual couple. In 2017, Jimmy's private life made the headlines when Norman Lear told an interviewer that Jimmy was dating political commentator Ann Coulter. However, Coulter later responded and clarified that they were only friends. While Jimmy has never been married, he is not lonely or antisocial. He just prefers his independence and freedom and is very much in touch with his sister, whom he has maintained a close relationship with since childhood. But the real question in all of this was, why was Jimmy close friends with a political commentator? Jimmy and his political views. You cannot talk about the life of Jimmy Walker without mentioning his strong political views. Jimmy was a very political person. As he navigated the tumultuous social and political landscape of his time, he found himself drawn to issues that resonated with his sense of justice and fairness. While he did not align himself strictly with a single political party or ideology initially, he held a set of core beliefs that guided his views on various topics. One of the key aspects of Jimmy's political outlook was his commitment to social justice and equality. Having witnessed firsthand the struggles faced by marginalized communities, Jimmy used his platform to advocate for progress and inclusivity. He believed in the power of empathy and understanding to bridge divides and bring about positive change in society. On issues of race and discrimination, 
Jimmy was a vocal proponent of equality and representation. He used his voice to speak out against racial injustice and systemic barriers that hindered the progress of minority groups. Jimmy believed in the importance of diversity and inclusivity, championing the need for a more equitable and just society for all. But as time went on, Jimmy's political voice grew, and on the O'Reilly Factor show on July 11, 2012, he stated that he did not vote for Barack Obama in 2008, and that he would not vote for him in the 2012 elections either. This was a bit surprising because Jimmy's political ideals felt very conservative at the time, but Barack Obama's policies and vision for the country during the presidential elections did not align with what Jimmy believed in. In addition to his advocacy for social justice, Jimmy also held a nuanced perspective on economic issues. While he valued the importance of hard work and personal responsibility, he also recognized the systemic inequalities that existed in society. Jimmy believed in the need for policies that supported working-class families and provided opportunities for economic advancement, which was one of the banes of Jimmy's disagreement with Obama's policies, this and the American foreign policy that the Obama administration favored. Jimmy understood the complexities of global affairs and the importance of diplomacy in fostering peace and cooperation among nations. Jimmy believed in the power of dialogue and collaboration to address international conflicts and promote stability on a global scale. In an interview with CNN, Walker described himself politically as a realist independent and stated that he opposed affirmative action, saying that it had outlived its usefulness. He also said that he was against gay marriage on moral grounds, but believed its legalization should be passed, stating it was not worth fighting against. Jimmy Zero described his political beliefs at length in his autobiography, Dinomite, Good Times, Bad Times, Our Times, a memoir. In it, he called himself a logicist, who believes in logic and common sense, holding conservative positions on many issues. Jimmy's Legacy in Hollywood As an African-American comic in the 70s, Jimmy Walker broke barriers and challenged stereotypes through his work on Good Times and in his stand-up routines. At a time when representation of black characters on television was limited and often one-dimensional, Jimmy's portrayal of J.J. Evans was one of such one-dimensional roles. It was a big topic of discussion that caused some trouble between Jimmy and his co-stars Esther Roll and John Amos. According to reports, John took it upon himself to talk to Jimmy and the show's producers about Jimmy's portrayal of the character J.J. The discussion did not go down well with Jimmy, and it led to John leaving the show. To this day, Jimmy is not on talking terms with John and Esther. Although he has said he is not fighting with either of them, and he does not also hold any ill feelings towards them, he just is not on talking terms with them. And when Esther Roll passed away, Jimmy was the only member of the Good Times cast who did not attend her burial in 1998. But despite their dispute, the show they created paved the way for other African-American sitcoms that came after it. Beyond Good Times, Jimmy continued to make a significant impact in the entertainment industry through his comedy performances and guest appearances on various television shows. His comedic timing, infectious energy, and larger-than-life personality endeared him to fans and cemented his reputation as a beloved figure in popular culture. Jimmy's legacy as an actor and comedian extends beyond his on-screen work. He inspired a new generation of African-American comedians and performers to pursue their dreams and push boundaries in the industry. His contributions to comedy and television have left an indelible mark on the entertainment landscape, opening doors for greater representation and diversity in storytelling. In addition to his entertainment career, Jimmy is also known for his philanthropic efforts and advocacy work. He has been involved in various charitable organizations and causes using his platform to raise awareness and support communities in need. Jimmy's commitment to giving back underscores his dedication to making a positive impact both on and off the screen. Overall, Jimmy's legacy as an actor and comedian is defined by his talent, charisma, and trailblazing spirit. His contributions to African-American representation in the media industry have left a lasting impact, inspiring generations of performers to embrace their heritage break down barriers, and showcase the richness and diversity of the black experience. Where is Jimmy now? 
These days, Jimmy is primarily focusing on stand-up comedy, touring across the United States to bring laughter and joy to his fans. He has always been known for his sharp wit, engaging storytelling, and energetic stage presence. Jimmy Walker's live performances are a must-see for anyone looking for a night of laughter and entertainment. While he may not be as active in mainstream television and movies as he was during the peak of his career, Jimmy remains a respected figure in the comedy scene, admired for his contributions to the industry and his enduring appeal to audiences of all ages. He still contributes a little bit to movies and series within the industry from time to time. In addition to his stand-up comedy endeavors, Jimmy is also involved in various charity events and community outreach programs as we stated earlier. He is using his platform to give back and make a positive impact in the world. His philanthropic efforts highlight his commitment to making a difference and helping those in need, showcasing the compassionate side of this beloved entertainer. When he's not on tour or participating in charitable activities, Jimmy enjoys spending time in his home in Los Angeles, California. The sunny weather, vibrant culture, and bustling entertainment scene of LA provide the perfect backdrop for Jimmy to recharge, relax, and draw inspiration for his future projects. Looking ahead, fans of Jimmy can expect to see more of him on stage, delivering laughs and spreading joy, and also making cameos on your favorite movies. Whether he's headlining a comedy show, making a special guest appearance, or lending his voice to projects that resonate with audiences, Jimmy's enduring charm and talent continue to shine brightly in the world of entertainment. Thank you for watching this video. We will see you in the next one.